Today I'm going to use the Dungeon Drap mapping software to adapt uh, writer Curzio Malapart's very famous house on the Isle of Capri to that of the mad wizard Xenazir. I'll be using the trace feature of Dungeon Draft along with architectural drawings of Casa Malapart to make this process relatively simple. You know, I want to put this together quickly so that I can get to playing D&D. I'm also always very conscious of saving the old brain pan for these ideas. So, let's do this thing. Hello again folks, KR King here helping you homebrew your own campaign. So in the last few videos I came up with this maze idea and then I thought of this mad gnome wizard Xanazir who created this, you know, island retreat and built this maze to sort of punish those who would dare intrude on his privacy. You know, and I always stress simplicity when you're creating encounters and battle maps. You don't want to get stressed by all the details and get overwhelmed. So what I did was I thought about Xanazir, this gnome wizard. He loves clockworks. Uh, this is what he specializes. I thought maybe a sort of geometric dwelling. I looked on the internet and I found this famous, you know, Italian futurist house built in this spectacular setting. I thought this would be great. Now I'm going to make some alterations on the house in terms of the architectural drawings. Malapart built this uh, in order to live in as a real person. <laughs> Xanazir is an imaginary wizard in a fantasy setting. He has different considerations when he lives somewhere. So let's look at the internet and see what I found. And as you can see, there's all sorts of images on the internet. And as you can see, it's just an absolutely spectacular setting on the Isle of Capri. You've got these famous stairs going up the roof to this feature on the roof, this sort of architectural feature that's gonna be the teleport chamber. And here is an architectural drawing that gives us a view of the ground floor and the roof. So now I'm going to fire up Dungeon Draft and bring in an architectural drawing to use with the trace feature. So we open up Dungeon Draft. I'm going to go with the 55 inch template. Loads up. And there's our screen there. Get that lined up. So now we go to the trace setting. We find our file here, which I believe is there. Okay, and as you can see, it's really small, but you can scale that using the scale feature. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this scaled to the five foot per square grid map here. And these are 15, that's 30 meters there. I think, let's see, that's going to be about 8.6. All right, let's make sure that we're centered on our map here. I think so. So now I'm going to start my drawing. And I'm going to draw this across here, and I'm just going to sketch this out. I turned the snap off so that I could have kind of a, you know, an unusual shape here. I'm trying to mirror Casa Mal apart. All right, so there is our basic shape. All righty. Now I'm going to do the interior walls. And there we go. We have this section here. Okay. All righty. And let's see here. Now he's got, now let's just co cover this. This kind of, So that's kind of the main living quarter or area there. He's got these two little rooms. I believe these were uh, bathrooms when he built the house, but I can use them as storage or something. Like so. All right, and this divides sort of his study, or actually maybe this will be his bedroom, and then back in the back will be his study, I think. Yeah, estudio. All right, now we got to just put our doors on. And I'm just going to use the doors that are actually on the architectural drawing. All right, I think there's one right, uh, oh, right there for that. There's one there. What do we got over here? We got the stair. Now that's going to be the entrance and then the stairs down to the basement. We've got doors into here. Let's see. Oh, and then this is a freestanding. There'll be double doors here. These were two separate rooms. I'm going to make this one room, I think. All right, so now I'm going to put in these windows here just to let some light in. Again, I'm only having one exterior door, so... These windows are going to provide light. They're going to be small, even as the, the house was, but provide enough light. But obviously, Xanazir was, you know, obsessed with his privacy or whatever. 
but they're going to have to have light come in and then one right there. All right. And that's how it looks so far without the trace image underneath. Bring that back up. Now these patios are really an interesting feature. They, they look out over the sea. They're an obvious area for some kind of encounter. The players, when they climb up the cliff, they're going to be here. You know, are they going to encounter something? I'm going to modify them a little bit. I'm going to have one access, one door to the house, which is somewhat realistic. I'll have a secret exit. But, you know, I'm going to channel the players in. Uh, if they do decide to go into the house before they go into the maze, they're going to run into a, you know, guardian construct. All right, so now I'm going to create walls here around the patio. I'm also going to do this on the stairs. That way, when I create the object of the stairs, I can hide the edges. So I'm just going to create that to define the outside wall of the patio and the stairs because there are different levels to this patio. So I go around like this, up, and there we go. And then I'm going to have a wall here. This will define the stairs that go up on the roof. Alrighty, and now I'm going to create patterns here to, to the, for the, uh, you know, the patio areas, the flat areas out here. And I'm leaving a gap between them so that I can put the stairs in. And here. Okay, and then finally there. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to put the stairs in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the path tool to create a single stair. And I move that down like so and position it. And then what I can do is I can copy that. Let's get that in a little better there position-wise. There's a little gap showing there. Okay. Then I'm going to copy that and just paste it and move it along like so. And that just makes it a little easier. Again, simplicity is the key. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing down here. Let's see, make that a little bit bigger, scaling it, and I guess I can cover up this one. And notice, even though it's being exposed up there, that's no problem. It'll be covered by the upstairs stairs. And I notice uh, I missed on this, this stairway there. I'll fix that. All right, so this is going to be the stairs going up onto the roof. And so technically it's on this level um, because it, 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 the other one will be on the uh, upper level. Okay, and that's sticking out, but I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to figure out a way to cover that up with plants and rubble and stuff. And finally, here's the last stair here. Okay. And I got a little extra patio there. And these are the stairs to the basement you know, the cliff facing around this is, you know, it's obviously visually striking. It's part of what makes this house so famous. You know, when Xanazir built this house, he was 15th to 20th level. He had all sorts of spells that could aid in the construction and getting in and out. He wanted to limit people from getting there. So it's conceivable that he would build this more on a separate sort of rock, maybe, you know, with a divide from the island itself. So now I'm going to do the cliff that runs all the way around Casa Xanazir here. And I'm just going to do, I always start with kind of a narrow one, a small one, and then I make them bigger. Again, you're just giving the image here of, you know, a big steep drop off. The players are going to have a picture. I got to fill in that patio there. Uh, the players are going to have that picture to give them a sense, you know, a 3D perspective. But then on the battle map, this is all just clipped. Notice how the cliff covers up those stairs sticking out. Objects will cover things up. So here I'm making this is in fast motion a little bit, obviously, uh, making this and I'm going around with a thicker one. And so basically I'm just going to create this illusion until then I'm going to put the water in at the bottom of the cliff. Okay, I'm going right, to do that right here. This is, I just missed that little area there. Okay. And we're going to do more cliff here. And I just get thicker and thicker depending, and again, how wide it is versus steep. Uh, it's all. Then here's the water all along the bottom of the cliff. All right. And that'll go underneath those objects, which is nice in Dungeon Draft. All right. And so we have water all the way around here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the cliff a little bit 
bigger at the one end. It'll be narrower here. So let's get this in here. Mm, like so. All right, there we go. And then just a little more cliff. Yeah, a little bit there, there. Like so. So it's more, you know, the peninsula gets a little narrower at the end. And just finish that off. And there we go. So I'm going to use plants and boulders to cover up some of the anomalies you have with objects, you know, the stairs specifically that stick out over the edge. I'll have some plants that go up multiple levels uh, so that you don't see those. So now I'm going to create some rubble and plant to cover up those stairs that are sticking out because of the angle here. On the other side, the cliff covered that up. Just to give it that little bit of visual, I'll put some rubble here in the water. Uh, again, this is just aesthetic, but I kind of like it. Go around there and kind of fill all that in, because rubble would have fallen down the cliff over the years, right? All right. The thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make some plants in here. I'm going to have plants interspersed with the uh, rubble that's by the stairs, just to give it a little variety. All righty. And okay, and then in that spot there and along in there just to even that out. There we go. All right. Okay, and then I'm going to scatter some uh, using the scatter tool all around on the cliff rocks. Again, whether when the players are climbing, if you want to have those be, you know, have needles or something on them, you know, again, I don't know how hard you want to make that, but there we go. So the, you know, roof and the unique stairs that go up the side are another striking feature of Casa Malapart. I also have this kind of architectural wall. I'm going to use this to frame the teleport circle. This is what's going to take the players into Xanazir's maze. Create a new level, and this is going to be the roof section. And this is where I'm going to have my teleport circle and the famous stairs right here. So first, I'm going to create this with walls so it has a different, uh, you know, it's the roof flooring. And then walls here that will define the areas for the stairs that run up the roof, as it were. So I'm going to have these stairs. Let's see here. Okay. That looks good. And there we go. And then I think I can use the copy feature here. Actually, I'll delete that. Let's get that better position. Okay. Uh, down a little bit. All right, now I'll copy it. And that way, okay, it's exactly the size. And I'll have one on the top and one on the bottom, and then I'll show you how I will cover those up in a similar way that I covered them up uh, on the ground level using vegetation and whatnot. All right. All right, we got our stairs. And that's how the upper roof looks. Of course, now I have to put that architectural feature in Let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move. There is the roof version of this on the architectural drawing. So now I'm just going to create a wall of cobblestone or whatever, and that will simulate uh, that feature that it's on Casa Malapart. And then I'll use the pattern tool and I will make a circle. This will be the teleport circle that will send the players into the maze. So now I've got these stairs sticking out on either side of this rooftop stairway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create plants first here on this level, and then they're going to grow up to the roof level, justifying that they would be standing up this tall. So, and obviously I'm doing this in fast motion, we're going to lay these plants along this cliff face, uh, just growing here, different sizes, different types. You know, maybe a little kind of a round one here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. And like that. And then uh, I'm going to show this level so that when I'm making these, I can see that they are going to cover up the stairs when I get to the rooftop view. All right. Okay. All right, that's the ground view there. And now... When I switch this to the roof, I'm going to put, uh, let's see here, I want to be able to see that. I'm going to put these on there. And basically it's just growing up two levels. But when you see the rooftop view and the players see this as a battle map, 
they won't see the you know stairs sticking out and they'll just see the plants that are growing up from below okay i have to get the same plants you know whether you want to really i'm trying to match the plants here there's the roundy there whether you nearly need to do that that's up to you now, when we look at the various side views, architectural drawings, we can see that Casa Malapart had three levels. If I was ambitious, I might do that. I think I'm just going to have two. I'm going to have the ground floor be Zanazir's uh, living quarters, uh, where his laboratory is. Uh, then the lower basement level is going to be where the kitchens and laundry and all that sort of thing, storage. Now, this is another scale. I can't scale this enough to match this basement view, but that's okay. I have an idea here, looking at that, of what I want. So I'm going to create another level, basement, and I don't think I need that. Okay. All right, and I'm just going to chart this out. Now the basement's going to go underneath there, under those stairs. Let's see, I'll do a different floor for this. And there we go, and it only goes that far if you looked at the drawings. And then I have this chamber underneath Xanazir's study, his private chamber. So let's put some walls in here. Yeah, woods and across has a hallway, and then you just have rooms here for storage. Or whatever, you know. And I'll divide that. Put some doors in. And whether these are gonna be, you know, construction areas for constructs or something, or what's there, I gotta decide. Then here's Xanazir's, you know, sort of escape room. We're going to have a portal here. This is personal portal that he used to get in and out. And then, of course, we'll have a little stairway that goes down from his study. All right, I just have to put these stairs in. I'm going to compare this to the ground floor and put stairs in that match that, that go from the ground floor to the basement. Even though I'm showing it, I'm still on the basement floor as I'm building this. Let's turn that off. Okay. And just get that to the right size here. There we go. All right, so now I have the ground floor, I have the roof, and I have the basement. So now we have Casa Zenas here. So the next thing I gotta do, I gotta make the constructs that are guarding the house itself. Uh, then we go into the maze. Uh, I've got, like I said, 17 dead ends. How many of these are gonna have traps? How much is going to just have information, you know, art, this kind of thing, and how much are going to have constructs. But that will be for the next video. So in the meantime, if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. I'm always looking for more subscribers. Please comment. I always answer my comments. But most importantly of all, keep playing D&D &D and tell somebody else about it.